and your garlic in that it's really anti-inflammatory as well. So it's great for dampening down everything in the body as well. So I would say is things like your garlic, your ginger, turmeric, those type of things is get used to having them in your daily diet as well. It might be just something like in the morning, you know, in your, if you're having a pint of warm lemon water, slice of ginger in there or break some in as well. It's a great way of getting stuff into your diet for great health benefits without really trying too hard. Okay, so we're first off, we're gonna go in, we're gonna brown off our chicken, and then we're gonna remove it, and we're gonna add it in sort of halfway through the curry. And the only reason I do that is just to make sure that obviously is the chicken doesn't get completely overcooked. Okay, so first thing is, we're just gonna put a little bit of coconut oil into our pan. So we have about half a teaspoon in there. And we're just gonna let that melt down. And then what I'm gonna do is to that, I'm also gonna add some of my turmeric, some of my curry powder, and some of my chili powder. And we're gonna cook that off for a couple of minutes to seal the side of that chicken as well, but also to develop the flavors of those spices in there as well. So again, your herbs, even your dried herbs, your spices, they all have phenomenal health benefits as well. As, and I've spoken about this throughout the videos, is that even things like when you're adding in excuse me, even things like, you know, your fresh thyme, your fresh rosemary, fresh coriander, fresh parsley, mint, basil, they all have phenomenal health qualities as well. So I would urge you is that try to include herbs and spices in your dishes as much as possible as well. Even the dried ones as well is, they all have those added health benefits. Okay, so in we're gonna go, our oil now is nice and hot there. And I'm just gonna go in with our chicken, first of all, into our pan, get rid of that. And in with a little pinch of our salt and pepper. So a little pinch of our lovely Himalayan pink sea salt. And a little grinding of our black pepper as well. And we're just going to turn up the heat slightly and get that meat lovely and brown. And while we're doing that is I'm just gonna get our spices ready that are gonna go into it at this stage. So we're gonna go in with about half a teaspoon of our turmeric. So just put in half a teaspoon of that. Lovely golden color, beautiful. We're gonna go in with a half a teaspoon of our chili. And again, is decide if you want the normal chili powder or the hot chili powder depending on your own taste. So when we go with half a teaspoon of that, and then we're gonna go in with one teaspoon of our curry powder. So again, you decide if you are going to go in with a hot curry powder or a mild one, okay? And really the fl that flavor is up to yourself completely. We're just gonna go in with another little bit. The curry powder's nearly empty. Okay. And then just moving your chicken round the pan to coat it in these lovely spices. And again, the reason we're doing this is to seal the chicken, but it's also is letting those spices hit the base of the dry pan in order to let all those flavors, aromas, and health benefits come out, okay? So we want to, it's basically what you're doing is you're dry frying them, okay? And it's, it's exactly what you would do if you had whole spices and you were looking to um, let those aromas, let those flavors out as well. You will need to dry fry them, which is basically just on a dry pan, and you're just letting all those flavors out, okay? If you don't do that, you will find it, um, that those, the, the majority of the flavors don't come out, okay? So we let that cook there for another second or two. And again, the flavors and the smells coming out of this are wonderful. It's like there's a spice there as well, but more than that, there's like a real warming flavor and a sort of warming smell coming from that turmeric as well. Just smelling gorgeous. So we'll give that another second there. I'm just gonna get a plate to pop those into, just so that we can remove it from the heat there in a second. Now, while that is cooking away there for another, about another minute, I am just going to prepare the veg here. So, part 
Uh, sorry, I'm going to actually, before I do the veg, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself there, is I'm just going to get our garlic and our ginger ready, okay? So again, just keep your chicken moving around just because you don't want those spices to catch on the bottom. And we'll take that off now in one second. So we're going to be adding in two garlic cloves. So again, just getting the skins off them, pulling the skins off. And we're just going to remove the chicken from this now onto our plate. So you will see there what I mean by the colour. I'll show you this now in one second. And we'll turn down the heat on that for the moment. Okay, so you can see there, I'll just very carefully sort of show that to the camera. You can see there you've got that beautiful yellow golden colour on it, okay? And again, that's all that flavour all that aroma coming out of those spices as well. And then we're just going to go in with about a quarter teaspoon of our coconut oil in there. Let that melt down. Okay, that's not going to take long now at all. And into that, we are going to start to add our veg, okay? So let's turn that up slightly. So already there's just such a depth of smells coming out of this one. Such an easy curry to make as well. It freezes brilliantly. So again, you could make this, you know, mid-week. Mid you can make this and then you can take it out at the weekend. And there's your Friday night or Saturday night dinner sorted, okay? So in we're going to go, first of all, with some chopped onion, chopped red onion. Give that a little bit of a mix around. Okay, I'm just going to let that cook there. We're also going to go in with some courgette and we're going to go in with some peppers as well. Okay, so they're just mixed red and yellow peppers, just whatever you have left over in the fridge as well. I happen to have uh, from last night a leftover red pepper and leftover yellow pepper, but half of each, so they're going into the curry today. So we're just going to let them cook away there for a second and I'm just going to get back to preparing the garlic and ginger. So we get two cloves of our garlic Take it off the skins of those. And we're just going to chop that down nice and fine. And again, the trick is, is just using the back of your knife is with the back of your hand is pushing down just to flatten those garlic cloves. But of course, as I always say, is that a garlic press, you know what, if you want to go with one of those or a grater, it's just as good. And just chop them down nice and finely. And then with the ginger, is we're just going to take a little bit off the end. So I'm just going to show you how much. Don't forget your veg over here as well. And in here, you will see is, gosh, it's quite a big bit, about a thumb size bit, okay? And we're just going to chop off the outer bits of it. And what I'm going to do is just very finely is I'm just going to slice it down, okay? So just nice slices. I'm going to turn those slices around and they're almost going to be like matchsticks, okay? Because if they're any bigger than that, then it's not overly pleasant to eat. Whereas this way is you don't really notice them. So again, just chopping them down nice and finely. And mix that in with the, in with the garlic. Now, back here to our, to our vegetables, and they are looking lovely. I'm just going to give you a little look of what they look like at the moment, so you can see there you've got a lovely variety of your vegetables. And again, it doesn't matter what vegetables you want to use in here, if you've got carrots, if you've got leeks, if you've got, I don't know, even frozen peas, anything you like in here, just go with whatever your taste is as well, okay? And these are lucky food. So then we're going to go with our garlic and ginger. Let that sort of cook down for probably about 30 seconds to a minute. And all we want to do is just literally let that garlic and ginger hit the base of the pan. And then it's just again letting all that aroma and that flavour out as well. Just be careful not to let it burn. So have your heat on probably like a low to a medium heat at this stage. Okay, that's what we need. 
And then what we're going to do at this stage is we're going to start to add in our tomatoes. So I just have a tin of tomatoes. And um, again, is chopped tomatoes are probably easier, but I happen to have just the plum ones. So what I'm going to do is when the tomatoes go in, I'm just going to use a fork and I'm just going to mash them down. Okay, so again, is you know, when you're looking at my recipes, is that if you don't have one particular exact thing, don't get hung up on it, okay? There's always ways of substituting as well is, and the idea of those recipes is that they're just a starter for you or a base for you as well. So, you know, feel free to experiment around. That's usually how I come up with a lot of the recipes anyway, is that I start from one recipe, I tweak it, I change it around, and that's how I normally come up with my final recipes. So then we're gonna go with our tin tomato. Again, get as much of that lovely sauce out as you can. Oops. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is just with a fork, is I'm just going to press down and I'm basically mashing down the tomatoes, okay? Or you can as well, as there's nothing to stop using the sata, which is, you know, the, the sieve tomatoes. That's lovely. If, you, if you're somebody who doesn't like the sort of texture of the tomatoes when they're cut, is the passata is brilliant because you're going to have a completely sort of um, lump-free curry apart from the veg. So let's just squash these down. And already you can smell all those spices coming through the cooking. Now, give that a good mix around. And that is already looking absolutely wonderful. And then what I'm going to do there as well is I'm going to add about 150 ml of vegetable stock. So I'm just going to get my kettle, which is my, I have some uh, freshly boiled water. So we'll go in with about 150 ml. Okay. And then I'm just going to go in with a little bit of my powdered stock. And again, as per usual, is I tend to use the marigold uh, bullion powder which is the stock, and literally it just is because it's virtually no salt, it's gluten-free, yeast-free as well, but um, I just find the stock cubes very, very salty. So I'm going to go in with a spoonful of that, and that's just going to give it a little bit of flavour as well. Not that it really needs any more flavour, there is loads going on in there at the moment. So now, just give everything a really good mix around there. That is just looking gorgeous. And then what we're going to do is with our chicken, we're going to go back in with our chicken that we sort of seared off, uh, sealed off earlier on. So again, just in there with all that. And then remember with that chicken is it's bringing all those beautiful spices to do with the turmeric and the curry powder and the chili powder as well. So we'll just give that a really, really good mix around with everything. And that chicken then is going to bring all those kind of... Um, sort of stronger spice flavors back into the dish. So that is just, let me just give you a quick look at this guys. And you will see there is that that is looking wonderful. So I have that now on a medium heat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that cook now for a few minutes. Remembering as well is that the, uh, the chicken, like as we've spoken before, do not go mental when you're cooking your chicken. You know, if you're cutting down into small chunks about that much, is that really you're talking probably anywhere between four and five minutes to cook it. Okay, maximum six minutes. But to be honest with you, is that that size is, if you're turning it constantly in a pan, is four to five minutes is loads, okay? So don't put it in and cook it for about 20 minutes. Otherwise, you're going to lose that flavor. But also as well as you're going to end up with very, very tough meat which is going to take away from um, any of the extra flavour in there as well. So I'm also going to go in with a little handful of sugar snap peas. And these are just these guys here. You'll see they're like almost like fat. How would we describe them? There you go there. They're almost like a little fat munch too in that they have the peas inside. But I love them because there's a great crunch in them. And then you have the little peas in there as well. So I'm just going to pop in a few of those. And again, I only want them to soften down, barely soften down. Okay, so we'll get rid of a few things here. And we're going to let that cook off there for a couple of minutes. And then to serve it as well is, get my bowl over. 
is one more, one more, give it a couple of minutes to cook. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding in then some coconut milk, okay? And that coconut milk is going to give it that creamy curry texture as well, okay? So in a lot of the curries is um, the tin tomatoes feature very prominently because they are, um, they're a good base for curries as well. But then is once you add in the coconut cream and all the spices as well, you don't feel like you have an overwhelming sort of tomatoey based curry, okay? So I'm just turn that up slightly. Let that cook now for another couple of minutes. And the other reason as well is I don't overcook it for too much, is that um, the vegetables as well, is that nobody wants to eat like soggy um, peppers and courgettes and stuff like that in their curries. You want to have something that still has a little measure of bite in it, okay? So the Italians call it al dente, and that is exactly what you want, because um, soggy vegetables are extremely unpleasant. Okay, so I'm going to try this sauce now in a second, but I'm just going to, again, let them cook down there for another minute or so. And then I also have as well here, is, I'm just going to grab it here, is I have a handful of green spinach, okay? And what I'm going to do is I am just going to um, slice it down just to basically sort of make it a little bit smaller as well once it goes into the pan. And the spinach, spinach is extremely popular when it comes to Indian dishes as well. And um, it just again adds that, you know, when you're tweaking your dishes just to make them a little bit more nutritious, little handful of spinach, little handful of kale in there, and straight away you've already upped the real nutrient content of the dish. So you don't have to, you know, be sort of thinking massively outside the box when it comes to your food is handful of this, handful of greens in there. You know, even those little bits as well add loads of nutritious, uh, nutrition to your dish. So you'll see there again is your uh, recipe. It's just going along the bottom bar. So even if you are going back to make this dish is that, you know, you won't get lost at any point. The recipe's there, the method's there. And as you can see is like all my dishes is, very straightforward. So you don't have to be Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen, you know what I mean? You can just be a normal home chef and still create gorgeous stuff. So we're just going to give this, we've given the spinach a very light wash, just got rid of the excess water, and then I'm going to be adding that in now in a minute or so, okay? Okay, so that's looking great. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in with about half a tin of our coconut milk to give it that beautiful creamy quality. Give that a nice mix around there. That is looking gorgeous. I'm gonna turn that up slightly. And then into that, I'm also gonna add some cut green lentils, okay? So at this point in your recipe, I had said your chickpeas, but unfortunately is when I looked today, I realized all my cooked chickpeas were in the freezer. But that's okay, because again, like all my recipes is that the idea is, is that if you don't have warm ingredient, it still means that you can cook the dish. You just have to sort of put the thinking cap on and think about substitutes. So I have some lovely cooked green lentils there. I'm just going to pop them in there. And they are beautiful. Really nice. But also as well is great source of fiber. Very imperative to your diet. Great source of fiber, great source of your B vitamins as well, and a great source of protein as well. So if you're a vegetarian making this dish as well, is that you can uh, omit the chicken. You can go in with some tofu if you like and just sort of pan fry off the tofu at the beginning, remove it again as per normal. Or you can make this with paneer as well if you're not, obviously if you're not vegetarian. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But again, is it means that, you know, if you're leaving out the chicken, by putting in the lentils, by putting in the chickpeas as well, is that you're still getting that protein content in the dish. So what I would always say is that, you know, your dishes have to be cooked balanced. You have to have your protein in there, your carbohydrates in there as well. And one without the other means that your diet or your dishes are sort of unbalanced, which basically means is that, you know, if you're having your dishes without any protein, you will find very, very quickly afterwards, you're hungry again. So it's the protein in your diet that really starts to fill you up and keep you full for longer, okay? So you may find is that sometimes sort of, if you've been watching what you're eating, and you just have um, maybe a salad or something like that for lunch. Within half an hour, an hour, you're poking through the cupboards again, looking for something else to eat, okay? So get into the habit of adding in, if you're not adding in meat or fish, it's adding in those plant proteins, and again, that will keep you fuller for longer.
particularly if you're trying to lose a bit of weight after the last few months as well, is that um, in order to do that successfully and to keep it off as well, most importantly, is that your, your, uh, your dishes have to be balanced. If they're not balanced, A, you won't stick to them. You'll end up hungry again, snacking probably on sweet foods, but you'll not lose the weight and also is you will not keep it off, okay? So, okay, that is looking lovely. Now, what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to taste that and see where we're at for flavour. Well, that's beautiful. Absolutely, but it's gorgeous. You've got the hit of those spices and the turmeric in there, the chilli powder. But even nicer than that is combining that with the creaminess of the coconut. It's just beautiful, beautiful. So if we go with our spinach, just sprinkle that over the top. And I'm going to just give that a very gentle mix around. And remember, as before, when we're cooking the spinach as well, is that once it goes into the dish, you really are just wilting it. Okay, it's a bit like when you're cooking it on the pan. You can nearly basically heat the pan up, take it off the heat, put the spinach in, and it will wilt down. That's all you're trying to do as well. Is But that, that spinach that we're popping in, it comes from the leafy greens family. Same as your kale, your cabbage, um, your Brussels sprouts, all those as well. They are phenomenally good for your digestive system. They're also a great source of fiber as well for the digestive system. But also as well as they contain um, the mineral magnesium. And magnesium is one of those, if you find that you are an anxious type person, if you get stressed quite easy, if you get irritable quite easy, if you're not sleeping at night time as well, as start to incorporate a lot more of the leafy greens in there as well because apart from the other not nutrients in there is that um, the magnesium in there starts to sort of calm the nervous system calm stress levels as well and when you're calming all that down invariably you're going to sleep better at night time okay so a little tip there for you and sometimes i think is that when we when we know why we're eating something it's a lot easier to make the change to actually eat it as well is rather than me telling you should eat it so if i actually tell you why you should i think it makes it a lot easier as well so i'm just going to spoon some of this out now so i've just got a huge well i like to serve the curries just in the nice sort sort of indian curry dishes as well okay but you can serve this as well with some lovely brown whole grain rice you can uh, serve it if you want with some gorgeous naan breads garden coriander naan breads as well or even some nice uh, papadons as well, or chapati breads, whatever you fancy. Now I find is that because it has the lentils and the chicken and everything in there is that for me, there's enough in there. It's very, very filling as well. But it'd be lovely as well is serving this with a little bit of mango chutney, if you've only that in the cupboard, or is even some of your lovely mint raita as well. Okay, and that the, the mint raita, because it's like yogurt based, is that it will help to sort of give that cooling effect from the heat of the spices, okay? So I'm gonna spoon some of this out and then I'm just gonna put some lovely fresh coriander on it, okay? And then I'm gonna give you a good look at it up close to the camera, okay? So again, as you can see there, that was in less than half an hour, how easy it is to produce your own, basically, not to be too corny, but your own fake away, okay, on a Friday night, and save yourself a good bit of money as well. Some of them on there, a couple of the nice sweet peppers on the top. We like a nice bit of colour on the top. We have some lovely of the yellow peppers. Okay, and some of the lovely sugar snap peas. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit of our fresh coriander over here and just give it a very rough chop, just to sprinkle over the top. stuck to my hands, not going in the dish. Let's get another couple of leaves. Okay, that looks lovely. Now I'm just going to give you a quick look up to the camera before I do a, another recap for you. So I will show you this here. So you can actually see is there in the space of 30 minutes you have my lovely simple Friday night chicken and chickpea curry, or in my case, it was a lentil curry. But guys, um, you can see how easily 
it is to create these dishes. And again, if you are sort of, you know, thinking, right, I want to get back on track. I want to, you know, start eating better again. I want to maybe reduce sugar intake. I want to, in, you know, start with the basics. Is don't start on crazy diets and eliminating everything or whatever because you're not stick to that and you'd be miserable as hell as well. Life's too short. So I would say to you is certainly from a nutritionist point of view is that start with the basics. Things like start with home cooking again. Start adding in one or two more portions of veg into your dish as well. You know what I mean? Is just get back with the basics as well. Is because when you start even eating these type of things as well, it's real food. Okay is you're not on a diet, don't agree with them, they don't work. You're not on a diet, you're not depriving yourself. I think on a Friday night, as you can have this and have a lovely gin and tonic or a nice glass of red wine with it as well, at no point will you feel deprived. But the thing is, you are feeding your body with really good, wholesome food as well. So you know what, is if, if you decide it's sort of, everybody's sort of back out now and some people are returning to work and stuff like that, but you've said to yourself, right, okay, that's it. I'm back on the wagon, I'm making the changes. I wanna lose some weight is that a good place to start is go back through my videos and my recipes and you'll see it's real food, but it's really simple to make as well. And I can guarantee you, I know you can't taste it from there, but it really does taste lovely, okay? It's also very budget friendly as well. You know, there's nothing in here that's gonna cost the earth as well. So start with your real wholesome food and then make the other changes with your exercise, you know, drinking your water, reducing alcohol, all those things as well. But I say is make the basic changes first and the rest comes after it. But if you do have any questions on that or even making changes to your lifestyle, to your diet as well, is please get in touch with me as well. You can always get in touch via my website, goodfoodnutrition.co.uk. You can book a phone call there with me if you like. And I'm more than happy to run through some, some little tips and ideas there as well. And also as well on there is there's lots of recipes to give you plenty of ideas for getting back on track as well, very simply, but also allowing you to have your treats and to eat real proper food, okay? So don't get sucked into the whole dietary thing is, honestly, eating the real food is so much more pleasant, so much more enjoyable as well. So guys, I will also post up my link to my website and to my fabulous foodies group. So if you do like what you see is, you know, by all means, come over and join us in the closed Facebook group. And um, yes, I hope you enjoy that for your Friday night takeaway. Um, and I will see you all back here on Monday afternoon for more cooking. But in the meantime, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And I'll see you all on Monday. Take care now.